afternoon, everyone. My name is Susan Felch. I'm director of the Calvin Center for Christian Scholarship. And on behalf of the center, and on behalf of the Department of Geology, Geography, and Environmental Science, and uh, the Christian Perspectives in Science Seminar, which is ably led by Lauren Karzma, we all welcome you to this afternoon and our celebration of a new book, The Bible, Rocks, and Time. <laughs> and we're going to celebrate in a very Calvin College kind of way, by talking. <laughs> talking about big ideas, and also honoring our colleagues. We're so pleased that Dave Young, Emeritus Professor of Geology at Calvin, could fly up from Tucson to be with us, and Ralph Sterley, who is a current professor of geology here. So we're just going to um, have a conversation for about 45 minutes about this book. There will be opportunity for you to ask some questions towards the end of that time, and then we will all adjourn for more celebration with cake. Dave, I would actually like to start with you. If you can't hear us, sort of wave um, arms frantically and we'll try to speak up. But I'd actually like to begin 26 years ago with the publication of Christianity and the Age of the Earth. So Dave, you're a professor at Calvin College and you're writing a book about hard science and your first sentence is this. Human beings are fascinated by the spectacular, the bizarre, and the mysterious. So, can you tell us a little bit about why you wrote that sentence and why you wrote this book in 1918? <laughs> I don't have the faintest idea. <laughs> <laughs> but no, tell us about the book a bit. Um, well, I grew up in a Christian home and uh, developed an interest in geology very early on at the age of 12. And, of course, I wondered about, when I got a little older, sort of high school, college age, how they fit together. Uh, and we have the account in Genesis 1 about God creating the world in six days, and uh, it was a story of a great flood. And then I got interested in geology, so I just wondered how in the world they fit, the two things fit together. And, uh, as a believing Christian, I certainly wanted to be faithful to the Bible, but as a potential scientist, I also wanted to be faithful to the, to the science, and uh, so I always had that interest. And then, uh, as I was growing up too, I, I wasn't aware of any work that was being done, of course, how much as a high school student or even earlier than that, aware of the work that's being done in a particular field. But even as I could in the college, I wasn't aware of any particular uh, helps for somebody like me uh, who was interested in geology to, to sort that all out. So I sort of had to figure it all out on my own. And I made lots of mistakes along the way, and stumbled along the way, and so forth and so on. And eventually decided I, I was going to, uh, to figure it out, so to speak and then uh, write a book or books that would help other people to understand how geology and, and Christian faith fit together. And Christianity and the age of the earth is in that mold. It's an effort to help, uh, on the one hand, it's an effort to help younger Christians, or, well, anybody, any Christian, to understand how geology fits in, and also to make it clear to the Christian world that the scientific evidence does not fit with uh, popular conceptions about the Earth being only a few thousands of years old or about a, a huge global flood being responsible for most of what you see in the rock record. And Ralph, you have said that this was a very important book for you, so I wonder if you would talk a little bit about the importance of this earlier book for you. Well, those people who've read the web news on Calvin's news will see it all laid out there, but as a uh, Christian who had been sort of reawakened in his faith in the 1970s, uh, I was actively trying to fit all this together. I had friends who assured me that uh, 
the earth was only a few thousand years old, and that uh, if you wanted to be an authentic Christian, that's the stance you had to take. So I began to look at rocks, mostly at that time in Missouri, and uh, very quickly found that there were some discordances in there. And uh, as the, the uh, news item in Calvin's news mentions, in the late 1970s, Dave's first book came out, uh, which was prior to this one, Creation and the Flood, that came, that came for me at a very, very timely point. And then when I ultimately began work uh, as a graduate student, this book uh, came out and was, at that point, greatly appreciated by a number of people that, that I was close to. And uh, I give some, share some of those stories in uh, the Calvin news item as well. When I finally arrived here at Calvin in the early 1990s, I made it a point to use that book in my class in historical geology, have every time I taught it, and I would continue to do so in the future, even though it's now a little bit out of date, because simply it was the best item of its kind available uh, for that sort of use. So now I'm going to hold the books up this way. 1982, 2008. Um, the world's gotten older. <laughs> That's right. More spread. Okay. More spread. Okay. A much larger book. Um, so just talk a bit, both of you perhaps. Why this book? Why now? Why so much bigger? Um, what's, what's happening? Uh, you said that this is both a revision but also a new book. Uh, so maybe talk about how these two fit together. There's photographs in the new book. There are. <laughs> <laughs> that, that They're mostly a, a dead white man, but there are photographs. Yeah. yeah, and they were very well put together. I should, we should give some thanks to Ellen Aldrin. I don't know if Ellen's here or not from Calvin's AV department. But Ellen, Ellen put the images into an electronic format, which then went to IVP. And on both ends, on Ellen's end and on their end, the images were clarified and made, it was made sure that it was the, they're very, very sharp images for having been reduced uh, so much. So they're, they're nice quality. But there's a lot more here than just pictures, so... There's diagrams. There's diagrams. <laughs> diagrams and pictures. And, and, and what else? Well, but, but why? You said that about six years ago you guys started talking about revising this book. So what were you right. thinking of doing... Um, well, what, what occurred to me is that we had, we had a very, very fine product here. As I mentioned, I had used it consistently in my teaching and would continue to do so. But I wanted to keep uh, this particular product uh, of, of use in, for another generation. So my hope was that we expand the book and it would be useful to young Christians going into the sciences or, as Dave said, uh, numerous Christians from all its walks of life for another, say, 20 years. And then hopefully at the end of that time, somebody else will come along and keep it rotating. Uh, before we go any further, I just want to say how great it is to be back at Calvin and to see a lot of familiar faces out there. Uh, good to see you, uh, any of you. Uh, it's bigger because Ralph is a contributor to it now. <laughs> it's all his fault. And not only that, the older you get, the more you think you know, and so you feel compelled to say it. But I, I think part of it is that there are a lot of new arguments that have come out from the, uh, the young earth community that have to be answered. Um, been new findings in geology that didn't exist, obviously, quarter century ago and you feel compelled to write about those. I, I think some of the lines of argument that we take in there are much improved over the original version and you need to do them justice. And I, I, one, and one more thing, I, I think uh, the original book did not have any chapters that dealt with the biblical material at all. And the reason for that was that my first book, Creation and the Flood, got into that, and I assumed, well, everybody, of course, everybody has read that book, <laughs> so they know what I think on, the, on that score. Uh, but um, I thought this time it would really be very important to include the biblical material, and, and not only that, but my own views on, on the interpretation of Genesis had changed over a quarter 